And who knew a board game could be so interesting? After White Slam from India, now we go to our first panel this morning, and the topic is on institutional ragging and bullying in sports academies and sports teams. Now, um, what a lot of people don't know is that in the world of sports, they actually have schools. They have sporting academies, they've got training centers. So these basically function as schools for sportsmen and women. And um, today, I am joined by uh, a legend, actually, a Kenyan legend, uh, an African legend, a global legend. And this, uh, of course, is somebody who's been very familiar with the Kenya International Sports Team Festival. Uh, she has actually been a friend of this festival since the inception in 2018. And we're very honored and privileged to have with us Dr. Rose Tatamuya. And her first global event was the inaugural World Championships in 1983 where she competed in the 400 meters hurdles and was the only Kenyan woman athlete in Helsinki. Thus, the first Kenyan woman to compete at the World Championships. And uh, at the 1987 All Africa Games in Nairobi, she won silver in 400 meters hurdles and reached semifinals of 1987 World Championships. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Then we're also joined uh, from uh, India by Ajay Govind. Ajay is also a friend of the Kenya International Sports Film Festival. In fact, last year he had a movie uh, called Marfali United that actually won one of the awards, Karibu Sana, um, Ajay. And he's an award-winning filmmaker and educator. And as a filmmaker, he has made over 60 commissioned films, music videos, short films, and directed two feature films. We're also joined by Mr. Sylvester uh, J. Kane. He's an executive committee member of the Higa Queens Football Club and executive secretary, Football Kenya Federation, National Division Two League, Western Zone. He was part of the management team that steered Vega Queens Football Club to the inaugural CAF Women's Championships League in Cairo, Egypt. This is our panel for the day. The topic is institutional ragging and bullying in sports academies and sports teams. Now, um, it's very important to make a distinction between ragging and bullying. So that's basically ragging. It's uh, being in a position of authority and using that authority to get something things done. Um, maybe it's not the best of things to do, but normally what happens is because you've been through it from Form 1 until Form 4, Chances are when you get from four, you'll also be taking part in the ragging. It's a kind of a, a character building sort of thing. But bullying, on the other hand, is something that can be psychologically and emotionally devastating. Because bullying is something that is designed to uh, make you feel that you're less of a human being, less of a person. And in fact, the person that is doing it is, a, is an, an authority figure that is actually imposing their authority, whether you like it or not. So we actually have um, Dr. Chachamuya here, who is uh, somebody who has been in the athletics world for a very long time. And she has had a wealth of experience in terms of uh, going through um, what is basically the challenges that all athletes face. And she is well versed with uh, actually these kind of situations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Dr. Rose Tatamoya because um, she can explain to us what she does in addition to just being the person that she is, including the various offices that she holds here in the Republic of Kenya. Dr. Ari? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. As uh, you have said, uh, Dr. Rose Tatamoya, national record 400 meters hurdles. Yes. I started running since 1974, mm -hmm. and uh, I retired in 1990. I'm humbled to be here. Thank you very much for your invitation. You're I'm not new here. And uh, we thank the, the people who have organized this uh, uh, film uh, sport festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, we encourage you to continue. And we, we are here to support you. Thank you very much. Racking in, 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 in primary school, yes, I went to primary school. Mm -hmm. And after primary school, I joined Form 1. Mm -hmm. Those things were there. Yes. And we thought it was a hell of punishing. Mm -hmm. It was so scaring. Mm -hmm. You could be told, what's the shoes? Yes. What's the floor? Yes. Even kneel down. <laughs> in small things, you have, you have not done it. We went through those things and... Uh, until when we, you reach Form 4, mm -hmm. it's now again you are done <laughs> to racking the Form 1s. Yes. And uh, it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's like a kind of a uh, intimate, uh, intimate intimidation. Yes. Yeah. But in sports, when you come to bowling, mm -hmm. it is so devastating. Because when you are training, you are training to achieve something. Mm -hmm. To achieve your qualification and also to achieve your training. Mm -hmm. When you are being given workout, you have to finish. And your coach is there to monitor you to see that the workout you have done is going to make you to qualify. Yes. 
But when now it comes to greatness, somebody doesn't want you to qualify or doesn't want you to make the team, here it comes. During those days, we had uh, hand timing, not electronic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In hand, uh, hand timing, somebody, if somebody doesn't want you to qualify to make the team, it can start it Late. correctly, uh -huh. but after you are finished, it will stop it maybe some seconds so that you cannot qualify. Mm -hmm. And you know exactly you have done your workout which makes you to qualify. Mm -hmm. Also in terms of coaches those days, mm -hmm. somebody can value you, you know. Do it, do it. You are not good, you know. Shouting at you. Mm -hmm. You cannot even qualify. So when you see the coach and he has given you workout, mm -hmm. you get scared already. You are worried. Yes. You are training with a lot of stress. Yes. So side things, it makes a lot of athletes or sportmen mm -hmm. not to make the, 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 the achievement or performance the way it is supposed to be. And especially if you're like a young lady, the coach is uh, more like, uh, in, in terms of authority, the coach is even like a father figure. Mm -hmm. So that's a very intimidating person, just, just how they are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, Ajay, I would like to know your perspective on, uh, you know, ragging. I'm sure you've got uh, ragging in cricket academies, and is it done in, uh, in a friendly sort of a spirit as well? I think I realize that there is probably a slight, um, a slightly different cultural context in India um, as opposed to um, what you're, you know, sharing in terms of what happens in schools in Kenya. Um, because in India, ragging is actually a criminal offense. Um, the Honorable Supreme Court um, has deemed it a criminal offense, and it is something that is taken very, very seriously. Um, and it has been recognized that ragging is actually the institutional form of bullying, uh, which has gone on for many, many years. And here in India, we've actually had many deaths uh, related to ragging, uh, as a result of ragging. Um, in institutions, um, whether it be engineering colleges, medical colleges, um, armed forces institutions, and of course, um, cases from sports academies as well. Uh, so I think there is that slight difference where uh, in India, the word is taken very seriously. And, uh, and we recognize that when bullying takes form of an, insti uh, of an institutional form and, and it's backed by the institution, wherein there are these different sort of rituals that are, that are performed, uh, year on year by students. Uh, like you said, a student that's in the first year when they move into the second year, uh, they carry on this tradition or ritual. Uh, that has to stop and that has to end because it has severe physiological, psychological um, impacts on the students uh, that go through this. Um, and um, I'm, I've been volunteering with an organization called uh, Society Against Violence in Education, um, which has been working on this cause for over 15 years now, uh, and we are a group of volunteers who have been trying to raise awareness, uh, trying to make sure that people understand that ragging is not acceptable, um, that institutional bullying is not acceptable, and that there are other ways of breaking the ice. There are other ways of building character. There are other ways of strengthening people. Um, and uh, that's something that uh, we as an organization have been working on. Yes. Uh, Sylvester, uh, as a fellow Kenyan, have you ever heard of any issues uh, arising from uh, monetization? I mean, are, are we now saying that uh, monetization should also be looked at as a, as a criminal offense in Kenya? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Well, Sylvester? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm saying, uh, from what Ajay has told us, uh, do you think that even here in Kenya we should take uh, things like monetization as a criminal offense? Is it that serious? Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this team to share on a very sensitive and yet important uh, topic that touches on the lives of the youth and they generally affect the talents of our young people. Um, thank you so much. I'm humbled to be part of this uh, panel. As my colleagues, Dr. Tata, 
uh, my, my colleague from India has said. Um, I do agree with what they've said about dragging. Um, yes, in Kenya currently at, at school level, because I'm speaking from the, uh, the point where I'm a professional, I'm a teacher by profession. Yeah, it's a criminal uh, offense to bully. Actually in Kenya, we call it uh, bullying, but we all know that ragging is a, sub, a subset of uh, bullying. Uh, at form one level in high school in Kenya, we call it monolization, uh, where um, during our time, you are to go through it. You are to go through monolization as Dr. Ritata had said it. Uh, and then it moved, uh, it is in school. Uh, at school level, the government tried to come up with the, uh, the Children Act that protects the security, uh, the rights of children. It's in our constitution, it's in our educational act and the policies. It's a criminal offense. And then when you come to the sporting institution, uh, it has not been criminalized as such, uh, because in sporting institutions, academies, in our training camps, uh, you find it is a, it's a, it's a no, because you find even at the leader's perspective as a coach, uh, coach silently may practice or they do practice, not may, they do practice the, actually ragging without knowing they are practicing ragging. Uh, so you find is a, it's something that requires a lot of talking, a lot of research, a lot of bringing new insights into it, educating people on it, so that uh, we can curtail ragging. So, I support uh, at our level, not like India. Yes, at school level, educational institution, it's a criminal offense, uh, though it still happens on minimal levels, but at sporting level, sporting level, that is in our sporting institution, uh, I, I don't feel, or I, I will not say authoritatively, it has been criminalized. Thank you. Now that we have a, a new uh, cabinet secretary who has just come in, uh, that's uh, Honorable Ababu Nomamba, uh, are there issues like this that uh, you feel that uh, he should bring to the front? And uh, um, Dr. Tatamuya, you being an experienced Kenyan athlete and, and a legend, do you think this is something that must be taken head on and uh, there should be legislation put in place that uh, this kind of things, whether it's ragging and bullying, should be done away completely? Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Mm. Uh, we welcome our CS uh, Nababu Namamba. Yes. And I know he was there before. He has learned a lot. And uh, we hope that he's going to work very hard to get right of all these uh, cartels mm -hmm. and all this kind of uh, bullying. And we know if we are going to work as a team, things will work out the way we want. Mm -hmm. Especially if he's going to talk with the, come up with a meeting of federations, mm -hmm. let them eye on their, keep out their problems they are facing. This is a new government, mm -hmm. and we know the policy and manifesto for the government the way they, they discussed. If they follow, mm -hmm. then I think we are in the right track. Okay. If they are going to for, to call federation to federation, and then from there call the legends of this country from different federations, mm -hmm. the retired athletes. Yes. And then we sit down with our minister. Uh, we are going to talk uh, concerning what we see it is not right in sports, mm -hmm. so that it can be trimmed and uh, we come back to where we belong. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ajay, um, speaking as a, a former uh, colony of uh, England, Kenya, and also India, uh, would you say that institutional ragging and bullying in sports academies and sports teams is something that is uh, not actually alien because it's something that is there even on a global basis. I mean, they do it uh, all over the world. I mean, in the U.S., if you're going to be joining the NFL, that's going to be there. The NBA is going to be there. It's a kind of a culture. Um, the, uh, to, to actually criminalize this is, do you think it's taking it a bit too far or it's exactly what is needed? I think the problem is 
um, when we use the word culture, when we use the word tradition, when we use the word um, any of these kinds of words, um, we have to look at what it is directed towards. So I feel institutional bullying or ragging in a sports institution where uh, people are bullied for their, their performance or their underperformance. Um, for example, I could give you a very specific example that I uh, have heard about and it's practiced uh, in many parts of the country um, where when it, in a team sport, when, one per, when a team loses because of one person, um, what they do is they, they sort of throw a lot of blankets over this person and they beat them up with bats or hockey sticks or whatever uh, kind of instrument that they have available um, as, a, as a way of, you know, teaching them a lesson, as a way of the team venting and uh, as a way of keeping it anonymous. Now, this, I feel, goes completely against the very spirit of sport. Uh, you know, to be a sports person is uh, a certain kind of uh, rigor, a certain kind of discipline, a certain kind of uh, ethic uh, that one expects uh, and that one kind of wants to look forward, uh, look toward. Um, so in a, in a situation like this where uh, you're doing things that you cannot do openly or, or performing acts that you cannot perform openly, um, you're clearly doing something that you know is not correct, is not right, is not acceptable. Um, and is against basic human rights in many, many cases, especially when it gets so physical and so violent. Um, so I genuinely believe that, um, you know, we really have to reevaluate uh, how some of these cultures and how some of these sort of so-called traditions and cultures came about um, and, and look at their value, look at, the, look at their relevance in a modern world. Um, you know, is, is this the best way of building a character? Is this the best way of teaching a lesson? Um, uh, so I, I think some of these things need to be reevaluated, and, and I'm sure that uh, sports institutions uh, and, and other kinds of academic institutions uh, where, you know, students go in with a certain aspiration uh, will, will look at this. Um, as far as criminalization is concerned, I mean, I think that is, that is a case-to-case -case, uh, situation. In India, like I said, there have been ragging deaths, there have been multiple deaths year on year. Um, because of ragging, as a direct result of ragging. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result of that, the Indian, you know, the Honorable Supreme Court decided to take that decision. Um, and, and if the case isn't so severe, maybe other measures need to be taken. But, but there certainly is something that needs some kind of rethinking uh, and, and re-evaluating that. Uh, Dr. Rosa Samuya, by its very uh, essence, when you're training as a team, you have uh, a certain objective, you're a group of people, you're a collection of people, uh, you have sort of like the same mindset, you're training under the same coach. Isn't a team, whether it's in Kenya, whether it's in India, whether it's anywhere in the world, isn't it a sort of a gang? Well, when we have uh, our training sections, mm -hmm. where we, let's say we are going to Olympics, the team is going to Olympic, the team has been named. Mm -hmm. Each group has got their coach. If it is sprinters, middle distance, long distance, and marathon, mm -hmm. each coach stay to their program. But there is one coach which is head coach. We normally train and then we, we program the workouts of the athletes. At the end of the day, we go and sit down with the head coach and we give out the uh, performance of the day mm -hmm. so that we can monitor the athlete. When somebody has called by under different coach, and now they have been uh, selected to go to Olympics. That coach might not travel with the team, mm -hmm. but they are being handed over to a different coach. So that coach who I met this athlete to qualify, he has to go to head coach and hand out the program from the beginning up to the qualifying time so that that coach can take it from there. So that if you train somebody, mm -hmm. you should not start from there beginning you mm -hmm. start from where he qualified okay so that he can go on with the higher training okay so we have different coaches at the camp at, the, at different levels uh, different levels so Sylvester so um, would you say that uh, in in Kenya in sports academies uh, you know training institutions do we have um, serious cases of uh, ragging and bullying that uh, you might have knowledge of 
uh, <coughs> thank you so much. Uh, we do have, we do have. As, uh, as I said, um, as Madam uh, Daktaria said, uh, when we give as uh, individual, individual sports uh, events, coaches hand over the team to the other, to the team managers and chaperones. So you find the coach who has been training the, the team or the player is not there. So the player is meeting new players. He's meeting new teammates at another level, maybe going for international assignment or going for the national qualification assignment. So they'll, they'll be ragging. They'll be ragging because of competition. There is a player who feels this, you know, ragging comes as a result. There are so many um, events that contribute to ragging. If you are an excellent player, for example, you are likely to be hated. You are likely to be ragged so that you don't give your best. Because I'm looking for, we look for, we want two qualifiers per event to go for an international assignment. And this is a national championship. Uh, so the other player is threatened. So and so is doing well. So they must rag you so that you are demoralized to give your best. So it is there. We have it in our sport academies. We have it in our training camps. We have it in our schools. Uh, it's, it's sports events. Uh, away from individual events, individual athletes or individual sports uh, uh, persons, even at a team level. A team level, as I, as I said, uh, an, an athlete, a footballer, is bullied by the, the other footballers. The coach, I've said silently, may not know this is bullying. The coach may not understand, but look at a coach who is using abusive language toward the player, for a player who has made a mistake. And you know, in every sport, we are human beings, we are likely to make mistakes, yes. and we make mistakes to learn. But a coach who will not take it when a player makes a mistake, and he abuses the player eh, in public. Oh. Uh, so the player will be automatically be, be we will say he's, he has been dragged. He has been harassed. Yeah. And you know, when, when, when it's an, a, a one, one of event, then you will not take it as dragging. Uh -huh. eh? You will not, you will just say it's harassment. But look at a coach, look at the captain of a team, look, of, uh, look at the chaperone, look at the teammates who repetitively, repetitively, continue to abuse this player or to treat the player unfairly. So we, we, we do have it. We do have uh, ragging uh, at institutional level, as I put it, uh, school level, whether in primary school during competition, whether in high school during competition, whether in our sports academies, we do have it. And as I said, in Kenya, in Kenya. Uh -huh. In Kenya, you will find uh, with uh, coaches and the way the culture has brought it out, that that is a norm. If you are abused for not giving your best, that's a norm. They are trying to tell you to give the best. But is it the right way? I mm. doubt if psychologists will agree with me. Because if you abuse me because I've not <laughs> given the best pass, then you are not helping me. As a good coach, you will tell me, you need to pass the ball this way. Yes. Or you need to start your race like this. But when you tell me you are full, you don't comprehend this. Is a, you know, already I know I'm a fool. So what am I going to do? I'm Thank going you. to feel foolish throughout the championship. Now, so we, have, uh, we, we have another form of uh, bullying, which is even more devastating here, yeah? uh, emotionally as well as physically. And that, of course, is... Uh, Ragging and bullying usually when it comes to uh, sports academies, even sports teams, usually leads to intimidation and even harassment of, uh, of, and sexual exploitation. So, um, Daktari, have you encountered incidents of uh, where <coughs> they have used um, sexual exploitation as a, a tactic to um, advance people in sports academies and sports teams? Thank you, Chris. Um, ragging even in Kenya in terms of uh, athletes. We have more than 50 camps in Kenya. So racking is there. Mm -hmm. 
because you want your camp or your athletes to be more in the camp than from the other camp. Mm -hmm. So it is like a competition. And when a, such a competition comes, then we are going to end up not selecting the best team. Because you, me, I want my athletes to qualify. So that tracking is there. Everybody is fighting for more athletes to qualify. Yes. When it comes to uh, sexual harassment, mm -hmm. it is there. And we have said, women, we are not going, we need more women to come to the leadership in sports. Mm -hmm. We are saying no more under the table. We want to be uh, in any, under the table. We not want to the be table. Yes. on the top of the table. Yes. So that the management of uh, men and women should be equal. Mm -hmm. When it comes to netball, let coach, uh, women coaches go to the women mm -hmm. where it is. And also in, in sports, yes. when there is, whenever there is women, you must appoint equal coaches mm -hmm. so that women can take care of women mm -hmm. and men can take care of uh, men. men. Yes. So in sex harassment, somebody will approach you. Mm -hmm to be a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Even women, mm -hmm. they approach men to be a boyfriend, yes. you see? Yes. So those things are there. And you remember when you go to the camp mm -hmm. and uh, you spend the night with a, with a person who is not your, 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 your husband. Mm -hmm. You know a husband and a wife, mm -hmm. when they are running together, mm -hmm. they control themselves, they know that we are tired, yes. there is a certain time yes. we shall play our game. Yes. But when you go to come and you, you spend the night with somebody, when I time you in a program, I say, you have run a, a 65 mm -hmm. or 61 in 400 in intervals. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you run 69. I must know there is something wrong. <laughs> yes. Because somebody will be with you, mm -hmm. He can do any exercise he will do for you that time. Yes. Because he might not know whether he will get you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But somebody, your husband, mm -hmm. knows the program. Mm -hmm. So we have those harassment in the camp. Yes. And it must be stopped. And um, Ajay, do you have the same issues in India in terms of uh, uh, sexual exploitation by coaches and trainers? Uh, and to, to be honest, I don't have um, any, any specific uh, information on that, but I do know that there is a lot of, uh, that dragging takes many forms, and one of them definitely is sexual uh, exploitation. Um, and a lot of it is actually uh, just really, uh, you know, inhumane uh, activities that go on uh, for the pleasure of, of one party, so to speak. You know, so it's, it's senior students uh, just kind of having fun and, and with that kind of quote unquote power at their disposal where they can just ask a, a junior to do whatever they want, they often get you know, carried away. And uh, and that is often, those are the kind of extreme situations that lead to uh, the psychological breakdown of people, people dying by suicide and, uh, and, and all the other kind of, you know, horrible outcomes of dragging that, that take place. Um, and um, in fact, one of the most common things that happens in campuses is to you know make people do perform sexual acts uh, not not so much as as you know what you're talking about in terms of sexual favors or sexual um, you know, that's it. just just like i said just for the, for the pleasure of it um, and, and and as an audience a group of students is watching uh, this other you know junior group of students performing these acts that's a, unfortunately a very very common thing here. Um, and again, it takes some really, really dirty uh, uh, turns and often leads uh, to horrible, horrible consequences. That in uh, sports academies and, uh, you know, institutions, um, you have, uh, first of all, sports is based on competition, uh, based on adrenaline, so you have a lot of energy, and that energy must be guided in the right direction. And misguided energy will affect you well, physically as well as psychologically. So do we have a lot of uh, damaged young athletes as a result of this? Yes, please. It has been there. Even me, I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. During my childhood. You can see now we have a lot of athletes, like almost 10 of them international.
the upcoming one. Somebody comes go to Olympics or during the trials and then over, all of a sudden they disappear. They are pregnant. Mm -hmm. And maybe when they are in, especially you are in sports and you are in a school and then you get pregnant. That is double uh, strategy because you are going to get a baby, mm -hmm. you are not in school, you are not running. So we have been losing a lot of international upcoming athletes on that sex harassment. Even some coaches, they have already warned and someone <coughs> to why they are going to, to spoil the small girls Go according to your age. Mm -hmm. If somebody you are married, you are married. If you are a coach, they have to be, you have to be disciplined. Even women, you have to be disciplined. Don't go to the camp, and then now you get uh, an athlete. You get a relationship with an athlete. Mm -hmm. That is embarrassing. When you go to the camp, it is a clean, clean camp. And in, in sports, there is discipline, like forces. Forces, there is drills. Mm -hmm. There is match pass. In athletes, in, in, in sports, we have coaches. We have athletes who are doing the workout. Mm -hmm. So discipline must be maintained. For me, I went through circumstances when I was, uh, that was, um, was it uh, 17 years? When I was in uh, 15, 16 years when I was in primary. Mm -hmm. So I, I got pregnant. And then from there I went from one, not knowing that I'm, I'm expectant. Because I was a child, I don't know. Even I was just asking myself, my, my stomach is getting extended, extended, and I know what is happening. So when I went to, uh, from one, I was pregnant already. Mm -hmm. So when I was being taught in class, it could not enter to my mind anything because I was worried what is happening. And there was a teacher which I didn't catch up. Uh, I was not uh, going well with him. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to mathematics, I have to go to toilet until he finished the the subject mm -hmm. is when I can return to, to the class. Mm -hmm. So it reached the extent where I thought I could not, even the uniform could not fit me. So I had to go every day, I go and uh, dig the fence mm -hmm. so that it, uh, I get a space of escaping from the school because I can't go through the gate. So I did that one for one week. Once I finished, I went through that uh, hole. I ran away from school. And imagine the government, they were paying school fees. Mm -hmm. And that time I was running very, very nice. So I went to Eldoret. From there, the person who, who came me pregnant, he came and looked for me, paid for the doctor, so that I can do the abortion. So I was clever enough. Two things, either I die or I lose my baby. So he, he kept money, 1,500, that was big man at that time. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had to go behind him after he, he told me to go back to school because that uh, baby it will come out. So they gave me injection and before I was given the injection, I told that the doctor, if I, you are going to, uh, to do the abortion, I'm going to report you. What we do, we share the money you have been given so that I can go and take care of my baby. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of myself because my, my, my girl, she's now 42. I'm proud of her. Yes. She's a big girl. Mm. So if I was to lose that baby, you would never know whether I was going to get a baby or not. When I got my baby in 1977, I ran more than the second one, mm -hmm. the third one, and I closed. Mm -hmm. So those things are there. Mm -hmm. Our girls are suffering. They don't know how to accumulate how uh, when you get a baby yes. or you get early pregnancy, what are you going to do? Yes. They are confused. So we need to, to, to protect them, not to go what I went through. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sylvester, um, yes. do you know of uh, the current situation of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the young athletes being sexually exploited? Are there changes coming up? Are there measures that are in place to uh, prevent this from being the order of the day? Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, 
it's touching so much. It's been touching listening to my mother, uh, Dr. Tata, a personal experience. It is so much touching and uh, painful. Uh, this is a very, very sensitive matter in sports, particularly in this country. Uh, sexual harassment is a very se sensitive matter. Why do I say sensitive? Uh, many of us in sports uh, will always sweep issues of sexual harassment under the carpet. We've seen it in media. Actually, media has tried to blow it out. Uh, we've seen coaches suspended. We've uh, seen coaches sacked. But that is the end of it. Uh, yet, uh, do we think that is enough? Is that enough for, for us to do? There is a lot of sexual harassment in sports. And uh, from both gender, I would not hide from both gender. Uh, I may not have tangible evidence was, uh, to bring it on table regarding, but I'm sure I've seen it, I've read in the papers, I've read, the, I've heard on, on radio of uh, leaders sexually um, molesting our boys in, in our sport camps, our boys. Uh, our girls come to our girls. Uh, our girls are the most uh, hit group of gender in terms of sexual harassment. Uh, uh, the, the, the sad part of it, Chris, is that we are not doing enough to bring this to an end or to put measures in place to stop this kind of nonsense. I say it's nonsense because uh, we've seen many girls, many young uh, boys uh, abandon sport altogether because somebody brings their career to, an, to a halt. Uh, Madam Tata was uh, lucky to get a child and continue with the sport. But we have thousands and thousands of young people who weren't molested, that is the end of the road. So there is a lot. This is a sensitive, as I, as I said, is a very sensitive topic that does not require discussion only once, the way we are doing. It requires uh, a lot of talking, a lot of conversation on it, and coming up with policies and measures to tame, to tame these, these leaders or coaches or sports leaders who are taking advantage of our young exactly. talents. And Ajay, I, I would, would uh, sorry, I would uh, just, 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 just go to Ajay for a minute and ask Ajay if uh, yes. the situation is the same there and uh, what measures are being taken by the government to curtail this. Well, I think, um, firstly, I think I'm extremely moved by what uh, Dr. Tata shared and I think uh, it again just shows the extent to which um, things are, uh, are and the fact that, you know, what she experienced in the 70s is something that we're still talking about in 2022 is, is, is a, something to take, take cognizance of um, and, and really shows how important it is to bring about a change. As far as the, uh, in the Indian context is concerned, um, like I said, because the Supreme Court here has um, you know, deemed it a criminal offense, what it has also done is the definition of bragging has been has been kept really open, so it, it actually encompasses all kinds of acts, um, and, and it it is up to it has given the power to the student to, to the complainant um, uh, to kind of to kind of raise a voice against any kind of a form of uh, ragging that takes place, which is against their consent, um, and and consent in that sense of course becomes critical. Uh, one of the other measures that the, the court has taken is all the students who join uh, colleges uh, in, in India, academic institutions, have to sign an affidavit saying that they will not engage in ragging. Uh, and, and that affidavit automatically means that if they do engage in the act and are caught in it, then the offense becomes even more serious because they can never say they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, so that is one of the measures that has been taken for uh, and it's obviously, that has obviously led to some form of fear, some form of apprehension, and I'm sure it has reduced 
um, the number of per potential perpetrators of ragging. Unfortunately, it's still there's still a lot more to be done, uh, and 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 I hope that conversations like this uh, move in that direction and help us in that direction. That is why we have the Kenyan National Sports Film Festival. We deal with all things that are sports and film, and topics like this are very very important. Sylvester, uh, last words, Stefanali. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, allow me just to say something regarding uh, the, 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 the issue of sexual harassment. And uh, we need to look at sexual harassment from uh, several perspectives, whereby uh, colleagues, that's the teammates, harassing one athlete uh, on basing on sexual, let's say sexual orientation. Currently, uh, a lot of harassment is now based on sexual uh, orientation of our athletes. And uh, you know, uh, we, we are not same. We are not same. Currently, we have LGBT. You know that. Uh, put yourself in the shoe of uh, an athlete who is an LGBT. There is that harassment. Then there is harassment from, uh, apart from the individual uh, colleagues, the, the players, we all also have harassment from what I've said, like coaches, from their coaches. But what, uh, I, I wanted to bring this, that there is a need for us to borrow from other disciplines. Uh, Madam Tata talked about forces. I'm a teacher by profession. For us, the, the, it is very clear, the policy, the act is very clear. If you are found, leave alone having what we call canon knowledge, <clears throat> even attempting to suggest by eyes, you go home and there is no debate about it. There is no debate. You are found uh, having uh, sexually molested any of your learners. You, it automatically you go home and you will be arrested. It is working. Mm -hmm. It is working. Many teachers uh, have been sent home. There are those who are in prison. Why is it not in sports? So th there is a need for us, Chris, to borrow from other disciplines so that a coach who is found to have molested, because coaches must lead by examples. We can deal with the other, other players, but we start with the head, the coaches. A yes. coach who must have molested any of his or her athletes, number one, should be brought in jail. Mm -hmm. And it should be clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now I shall go to uh, Daktari, who, by the way, is also a brand ambassador for the Kenyan National Sports Film Festival uh, since 2018. For the first two years of the festival, she was a brand ambassador together with uh, Douglas Wakiori. So she serves in this capacity and uh, when it comes to Kenyan National Sports Film Festival in various capacities. Uh, she's a friend of the festival. She's a brand ambassador. She's an athletics legend. And now I shall give her a last word on this issue. Thank you, Chris. Uh, what we should request the government in this all comes, they should be having somebody who have to go and bring the performance database for the, all the camps who are there, who are taking care of the athletes. And also, we need more seminars so that we can share ideas together. Mm -hmm from where we were and what, where we are at the moment. Because things have changed, it's not the same. Yes. So we need the government to come up to keep in, and that's why we have this institution like Kenya, uh, Kenya Sports uh, Film Festival, yes. bringing such things. We are finding out the solution, how we can end up uh, racking and bullying and uh, sex harassment mm -hmm. in all institutions. So we are requesting the government that we put up our, we pull up our socks, we work as a team, mm -hmm. and solution will, will be there. Thank you very much. And uh, a special message to our incoming uh, cabinet secretary uh, for sports. Uh, Bonawazi, you have heard the concerns that have been raised. Uh, we have talked enough. I think now is the time for action. And uh, here at the Kenyan National Sports and Festival, this has been the panel on institutional ragging and bullying in sports academies and sports teams. Thank you very much, my panelists, uh, Dr. Tari, Rosa Chamuya, uh, Sylvester Kane, and also Ajay Govind. And um, stay tuned because.